Razorback fans. Welcome to this week's episode of Real Talk with the Razorbacks. So you might have noticed we've switched things up a little bit. So today I'm going to be your host and I'm going to be interviewing the typical host, Felicia <laughs> Hano. Welcome, Fish. Thank you for having me on the show. So fun to be the host. Yeah, it's different being the the guest. I think I like being the host a little bit more. But Are you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> so usually you're the one interviewing the athletes, but I thought it would be awesome if our Razorback fans could get to know you a little bit since you're a new coach on our staff this year. And um, most people don't know that we actually worked together at UCLA before this. Um, but why don't you start by telling us how you ended up as a volunteer coach here at Arkansas? What was your journey to get here? Well, my journey definitely wasn't the most conventional. I didn't even want to be a coach, really. Um, I thought after I graduated, I was just going to be done with gymnastics. But given the circumstances of how last year ended and how my career kind of ended, I just wasn't quite ready to say goodbye to gymnastics. And so that's when I reached out to you and tried to figure out if there was a role for me here. And that's how I really got into coaching. I didn't really know what I was going to be doing here. but. I'm so excited to be here and I love it here and I love the program. Well, I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you called me that one day and said, can I come be the volunteer coach? Because um, when I tell you guys that Felicia has had such an incredible impact on the team, um, that's just putting it lightly. You've been such a great addition and you've really, um, you've taken on a lot of roles in the program. So why don't you tell everybody, because most people might not know, um, in addition to your coaching role, what all do you do on a daily basis for the Arkansas Gymnastics program? Yeah, so I coach the vault, which was really exciting when I found out that I was going to be coaching vault because it was one of my favorite events as a gymnast. And then I also work with the social media teams on the Instagram. I actually run all the stories. So the stories that you guys see on the daily in the gym, I do all of that. And then I also run the TikTok, which you guys see on TikTok Tuesdays on Instagram as well as TikTok. And then I also have been doing real talk. I produce and kind of like direct that along with Zeb, our awesome videographer. You do such a great job. I love the creative lens that you have. And every week you've got ideas about the TikTok. And really, um, I remember when we talked about you coming here and one of our goals was to help the fans get to know the athletes a little bit more. And they obviously see their gymnastics on TV, um, but not a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. And so you've really helped with that, especially the stories and practice every day and for the fans to get to see an inside look at what goes on in our gym mm -hmm. um, and then get to know the athletes. It's, it's just been amazing. So um, awesome. W okay, so tell us what you've enjoyed the most about coaching. I think just interacting with the girls on the daily basis, not only seeing their successes in the gym, but also outside of the gym has probably been my favorite part about coaching. Just coaching them as a well-rounded person, not just a gymnast, has probably been the most exciting and fulfilling thing for me. It really is amazing how gymnastics is just this big metaphor for life. And when you're coaching technique, you, you really are teaching lessons on mindset and how to take those lessons into their lives after gymnastics and it's, it's really cool to be able to do that and I'm sure you're, you're realizing that now. Yeah, and just because I had such impactful coaches in my life like you and Miss Val and so many other great coaches at UCLA too um, have really taught me what it means to be like a coach in gymnastics but also a coach for life and I think without you guys, I one, probably wouldn't have wanted to be a coach and then two, m my messages to the girls probably wouldn't have been as impactful. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So talk about what are the differences between your experience as an athlete, because obviously you were a national champion and elite athlete and you accomplished so many amazing things, but what's the biggest difference between Felicia as an athlete and your experience now as a coach? I think Felicia as an athlete is not as level-headed as Felicia as the coach. <laughs> um, I think as an athlete, I mean, I'm still super passionate and emotional, but I think I keep things a little bit more rational now as a coach because I see both sides. And as an athlete, I just only felt all the emotions, all everything, every single day. So I think definitely now I'm a little bit more level-headed. And like I said, seeing both sides has really helped me. 
That's really interesting because you you have such a consistent demeanor. Like when you're coaching, you don't get too emotional. You're not too chill. You're you're kind of in that perfect spot in the middle, which is really really good for our athletes. You know, when they come in the gym, they know what to expect from you, and you have a high standard. But you just are consistent with your demeanor. It's it's really good for the team. So what? Do you draw from your experience in terms of technique? You know, when you're coaching one and a half on vault, do you think about your one and a half on vault? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've definitely shared with the girls, like, what used to help me and different techniques or different ways of thinking about things has helped me. And I think that they appreciate it because they know that I've been through the same things and I know what they're going through. That's awesome. So I want to shift gears a little bit and just get to know Felicia a little bit um, with some fun questions. Okay. So <laughs> you've been in Fayetteville for a few months now. What are your favorite spots in Fayetteville? Oh my gosh, there's so many. I'm definitely like a foodie person, so I like trying out new restaurants. And I think probably my favorite go-to restaurant is Doomsday right now. They have the best breakfast tacos. And the best They're breakfast so tacos. good. I can have them every day probably. And then it's not in Fayetteville, but in Arkansas, I really like going to Devil's Den um, and going hiking there because they have the most like amazing, beautiful overlook that you can see a bunch of trees and valleys and hills and stuff. So I really like it there. Mm, it's so beautiful. And okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but you've never left California. This is your first time living outside of California. You are a, a California girl. Yes. Are you a Fayetteville girl now? I think I am. I definitely love California and I miss it, but I never thought I could live anywhere else, and Fayetteville's honestly so awesome. I'm surprised how much I've fallen in love with it because there's so much to do here. Everywhere you turn, there's something new to explore, or like all these beautiful like nature walks and hikes and stuff is something that I never expected when I came to Arkansas. I feel the exact same <laughs> way. It, it pleasantly surprised me, and now I can't picture myself living anywhere else. No. Um, so, you know, you've been here long enough to know that Arkansas Razorback sports are like religion. It is oh the gosh, talk of the yeah. town <laughs> um, between football and basketball and gymnastics and you know all the sports. What has been your favorite Razorback moment so far this year, either with gymnastics or another sport? I mean, out of all the sports, I think football was definitely so electric. Even though it was literally like maybe less than half capacity, the crowd and the fans are just so wild, and they love. Razorback sports, but I think gymnastics, my favorite moment was we were, when we were at home and we broke the record for the first time. And I think that was just so awesome, especially to do it in front of a home crowd. Everyone was so pumped, the girls were so emotional, and I think that was probably my favorite moment this season so far. I have to agree, that was the highlight of, of the year so far. We still have more to go, but um, breaking the program record in Barnhill at home, so fun. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to stir up any drama here, but who is your favorite other coach on the staff? Oh my gosh, you can't <laughs> ask me that. <laughs> and you don't have to say me. You don't have to say me just because I'm sitting here, but who is your favorite other coach? No, I love you guys all equally. You guys are all so amazing, and I feel like I learn something new from each one of you every single day. But I've gotten super close with Caitlin, the other assistant coach here, and we're literally like two peas in a pod. I don't know how, we have never been friends before because we get along so well. Yeah, you guys do, and you're, you're similar, you're close in age, yeah. and you have a lot in common. You're both really um, excited, just passionate people, and it's, it's a great duo to have on the staff. And, you know, Chris is pretty great too, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is, Chris keeps all the laughs going in the gym. He is just a ball of energy. I mean, you guys saw him when he was on the show, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Describe your coaching style in three words, in only three words. Oh my gosh, only three. Okay, I think the first one would have to be collaborative because I think it's really important to have like that open relationship with the coach and the athlete in order for things to work out the best. Um, I think motivating because I found when I was being coach, I really liked a really motivational and inspirational coach. And then also I think just fun, just having fun every single day. That's awesome. Collaborative, motivating, and fun. I completely agree mm -hmm. with those three qualities. <laughs> That's what you bring into the gym every single day. Um, and we love it. So thanks fish. <laughs> So we are heading to the SEC Championship this weekend, and everybody's really excited. Uh, we're in the night session for the first time ever. 
Um, what do you think is possible for this team and what do you want to have accomplished when we leave Huntsville this weekend? I think this team is capable of so much. I feel like this whole season we've been on this like upward trajectory and I think this weekend is no different. I think we're, the team just wants to go out there, hit four for four and just do what they've been doing in practice. They've been working on all the little details this past bye week and I know that they're really excited to go out on podium and just get another really solid away score to kind of contribute to the NQS. Um, and I think they're capable of breaking a record again. Absolutely. I completely agree. It feels like we've sort of been climbing this mountain and then each weekend we just focus on taking one step up the mountain. We don't have to go all the way to the top in one meet, mm -mm. Um, but just be a little bit better than we were the week before. And it's been so exciting to see the way that this team has continued to build and grow and accomplish so much and continually set records. Um, and reach their goals that they set. You know, we got together in the fall and we, they set some pretty hefty goals and they've reached most all of them so far. So I'm really excited to see the team and how they respond to the meet this weekend. Um, and I think the most important thing is that we just treat it like every other meet we've had this season and go in and do our jobs and, and have some fun. Okay, so last question for you, Fish. If there's one thing that you would want people to know about you, what is that one thing? I was thinking about this last night because I was like, I asked all the girls this question and I was like, what am I gonna say? I had to ask you. I know, I guess. Well, since the Razorback fans don't really know me too well, Fish is my nickname. Everyone calls me Fish. It's been my nickname ever since I was a little girl. I don't know why, it just is. And everyone growing up, everyone in college and everyone here calls me Fish, so. Didn't you say your dad gave you that nickname first? He did. He actually did give me that nickname, and I, I really don't know why. It just kind of stuck with me. So now I invite you all to call me Fish. There you go. Fish <laughs> Hano. <laughs> all right, Fish. So thank you so much for being my first guest ever on Real Talk. Next week, I'm, handi I'm handing the reins back to you because this is your gig. <laughs> um, but we want to let everybody know that we will be competing on Saturday night at 7 o'clock on the SEC Network in the SEC Championship night session for the first time ever, and we'll be starting on beam. So pretty exciting. I love that we get that challenge of starting on beam. And Sneak Peek will be wearing a brand new leotard this weekend that I'm very excited about, so. It is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I feel like we have to say it at the same time because this is what you do. Mm -hmm. So, ready? Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll see, see you next time, time on Real, Real Talk. Talk.